Well, you have been uh, hearing the, the word new this morning already a number of times, and I'm excited to uh, enter into a new book uh, for us here in the Bible that we'll be uh, looking through and preaching through on Sunday mornings. It will go along with uh, this series that we're titling Gospel Equals Life, and there'll be more on that in, in a moment. If you're new to PCC, we preach through the scriptures, and we will often preach through an entire book in the Bible, and we preach uh, usually at a pace that allows us to really be able to dive in and uh, really bring uh, our attention to what was written, and we believe that the Lord God himself, in a mysterious way, takes a hold of his scripture, uh, and, and then he uses his words to shape people in this world, and so we devote ourselves to the Word of God when we come together as a community on Sunday mornings. And so we, uh, we'll do that. We'll, we'll take our time, and we don't skip over uh, certain passages uh, in these books that we study, even if there are some really difficult passages there. Uh, but we really want the full counsel of God. And so Galatians, uh, you might be asking to yourself, John, why Galatians? Why did we uh, choose the book of Galatians? Well, this is a wonderful letter that Paul has written to the church of Galatia. And it's filled with all kinds of wonderful themes. For example, we're, we're going to be looking at such exciting themes such as, you know, first of all, the, the Lord God has already uh, enacted this age to come. And so we're living now in the age to come. And so that's an exciting theme that we'll be looking at together. You're already getting excited, I can see. Here's another wonderful theme uh, the God, that God's rescue plan for the world has been accomplished. It's been won. It's been done. But it's also well underway and continuing. And so this is another theme in Galatians that will be uh, really exciting for us to also dig into. And then another wonderful theme is that the Spirit's work in the lives of people is producing wonderful fruit. And so three great themes already in the book of Galatians that we're looking for. But I want to say that what really I believe God laid upon my heart as I spent time in prayer asking the Lord, where are you directing us in the scriptures next? I believe he laid Galatians upon my heart, first of all, because Galatians is really a book for our times. It is a book for our times. Our context today resonates with the context of that Galatian church in the first century. Yeah, our times mirror their times. And so uh, I think that this is a very significant thing then for a people of God to come around uh, a passage of Scripture or an entire book where what the people of those days were going through mirrors ours. We say, John, how? Uh, can you give me an idea of how our context resonates with theirs? Sure, I can give you one right off the bat. I would say one of the most significant ways that our two times kind of look so similar is that their church in the time of the Galatians and our church face an opposition to the truth about Jesus Christ. And so I believe that that's happening in our time, and the church of Galatia was certainly experiencing that, an opposition to the truth about Jesus Christ. And really the key word there is truth. So there's a lot that's going on in Galatians. To bring the people of God around a grounding of what is true about Jesus in order that we can move forward on that kind of foundation and that grounding to be the people of God that we're intended to be. For example, our verse 1. If you look at our, our scripture for today, you can see in, in verse 1 that there was an opposition to truth that Paul was facing. And so he writes into this. He writes this, uh, verse 1, This letter is from Paul, an apostle. I was not appointed by any group of people or any human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. This is an interesting way to start a letter writing to uh, churches that he planted probably in his first missionary journey. It, it's more than just him giving this church his bona fides. You know, this, this is my qualification to be able to write to you a letter. Well, in fact, it reads more like he's defending himself, which is strange because 
if we look at the context to this letter being written, as I said, Paul already knew these people, having sort of planted these churches in his first missionary journey to those cities in Galatia. Why now is he writing in such a way that sounds a lot like he's defending himself? Let me read these words again. I was not appointed by any group of people or human authority, but by Jesus Christ himself and by God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. And what we find in this letter is that Paul is indeed defending himself. And what he's defending is the truth of his message. That message that was preached about Jesus being the one who was crucified and that God raised him from the dead, the center of the gospel. Well, that truth was being challenged and was being opposed by the people that were surrounding the Galatian church and even within the church itself. And that kind of opposition was palpable. It was a force against the people of God that was coming from government. It was coming from society. It was coming from culture. It was coming from the pop culture of the time. And all of it had built and built and was such a great force against the people of God that Paul wrote into this church a beautiful word of saying here is what's true and I need to defend this off the bat to say that my message about Jesus Christ came from God himself that's essentially what he's defending saying I'm an apostle I'm somebody who was appointed by God himself I was appointed by the one who actually raised Jesus Christ from the dead and so what I say about Jesus is truth that's a kind of foundation that our society needs right now and it's certainly a foundation our church needs today the church of the west needs that kind of a foundation because the church itself is being opposed by that same kind of force that existed in the first century it's still opposing us in this very day and it's strategically targeted around jesus himself It may look like there's a lot of attacks against the church around the periphery, but really it's that central message of who Jesus is and what he did on the cross and the empty tomb. That's really the direction and the focus of the enemy and the opposition in our time. And so what we need then is a foundation that keeps us from being swept out by the tide of the opposition in our time. It's good for a church to be able to do that. I, I went on a holiday in, uh, in August, and uh, we went to a beach, and this particular beach is uh, famous, or maybe infamous, depending on what you think, as being the beach where the last scene of Planet of the Apes was filmed. The last scene, they blew it up, and it's there that this scene was taken. Now, for some of you, that movie was filmed a long time ago, and so you may not even remember that. It was 1968 when that film was actually produced. Well, I was told by somebody that this is the shot of the last scene. Well, I looked up on my phone uh, what that scene looked like, and I could see it there on my phone, and then I looked at what was there before me, and I must say that it looked very similar, but there had been a lot that had changed. I could tell that it had changed quite a bit. Do you know what had changed? The cliffs that come up against the beach had eroded since 1968. In those 50-odd years, there had been a great change of erosion that had taken place. The tides, the, the wind, and certainly the waves had pounded against that cliff in such a way that you could see in 50 years a remarkable change of erosion. I was thinking of that in my mind as I was going over Galatians and why you've brought this, Lord, into my heart for the church in our time. I believe that we are experiencing a time in which the enemy is seeking to erode the faith that Christians have in that central core belief of Jesus Christ crucified and risen again, that gospel. And so it's good for us to return to that strength that God has given us in Jesus himself. Well, the pandemic uh, that we experienced, I believe, created an acceleration of what's going on in our time, an acceleration of that kind of attack or opposition to the church and to Jesus. So I want to call you, church. 
I want to encourage you and call you to be the people of God now in our time who come together in church, in community, and certainly as individuals as well or as in growth groups and groups at PCC and these different ways that we have here in our community. I want to call you to really press in in this time. This is the time for you to be able to press in for this foundation of truth. This is the time for you to be able to dig into the gospel itself and in knowing what the gospel is and relishing the truth about Jesus and then learning and really founding yourself on the truth, then I believe that God will move us forward in his strength in this time. Do you believe that as well? I hope you're encouraged to that end as well. That's the first reason why I believe the Lord laid Galatians upon my heart for this time. It is a message for our times. Here's the second. I believe that it is a message, or it is a book of the Bible for our purpose, for our purpose. You know, as you continue in this opening uh, passage that we've read this morning, we see the purpose that the church is called to. You know, the church has a purpose, and Paul wants to make it clear right from the very beginning to this church of Galatia. And I believe that we need that same truth of the purpose of what we're called to be if we're to move forward in the way God wants Pacific to be in our time. Look at verse 2 with me again. Verse 2 says this, All the brothers and sisters here join me in sending this letter to the churches of Galatia. Well, you're seeing a map right now of the uh, region of Galatia at the time of Paul when he was writing this. If you've been with us at all this summer when I've been preaching, you may have seen this very same map on a whiteboard uh, directly behind me. You didn't know that sneakily I was getting you already immersed in the geography of Galatia so that you'd be ready for September as we dig into this message. What you're looking at is some geography that includes cities that Paul went to uh, on a missionary journey, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, where people came to know who Jesus was, and they believed in him. And they became Christians and formed those early churches that this letter is written to. Well, Paul, now having heard of what's going on in those churches that he went and formed, hearing that there's such opposition to the truth of Jesus, he's writing now back to them, and saying, don't forget what you were called to. You were called to a purpose. You were called to a purpose. Most people look at the book of Galatians, and their first instinct is to look at Galatians as maybe an excellent way to build a theology of salvation. Uh, and so looking at some wonderful passages in this gospel, or sorry, in this letter, epistle, uh, there is a sense in which, ah, yes, now I can really see how somebody becomes a Christian. And certainly those verses are there. But listen, it's more than that. Paul's not just writing for that specific purpose. We're going to see in the book that he's actually writing to say, look, here's the reason why we know that we're saved. Because you are saved... Through Jesus Christ, his blood on the cross, and by believing in him, the forgiveness of sins and the canceling of our debt, and the being freed from the slavery that we had to death. Well, that truth being told, we have a purpose to live. And that's really his focus. That's the arrow point of Paul's message. We have a purpose to live as a church. Well, that purpose is to live the new life that we're called to. We're to be the new creation. We're to be the new creation that God has created here on this earth to bring about goodness, to bring about the, the work of the Holy Spirit in the world in which we live in, to carry out the purpose of sharing the good news message with everyone in this world. That's our purpose, and that purpose can be missed. That purpose can be set aside. Paul recognizes that, and so he wants to write into that to say, don't forget your purpose. Don't forget that you are this new life. By the way, I told you right from the beginning, I was going to explain why is our new series titled Gospel Equals Life. Well, there you have it, really, in that moment, you can see that uh, the gospel uh, is that truth that's being opposed, and the new life is that in which we're called to be, to live in that way. 
Well, uh, Paul does this in a number of different ways. I'll just give you one quick one before we conclude. And that uh, very quick example is Paul saying, listen, church, you can't be just people pleasers. You can't just be people pleasers. Jesus said it this way, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve. You'll, you'll love one and you'll hate the other. Very strong words. You can't have a foot in both worlds. You can't have a foot in the church and then also a foot in the world. Because what you'll find is that then you've got one foot in heaven and one foot in hell. And this is the kind of strong language that Jesus uses. And Paul picks this up to say, Church of Galatia, some of you are becoming people pleasers. And the reason you're becoming people pleasers is because of that opposition that the church is facing. And then not wanting to cause uh, a problem or not wanting to be swept up in this. You're uh, instead becoming someone who has a foot in both worlds. Well, we need Galatians then, and we need those challenging words from Paul that we'll be able to preach through in order that we might be a people that is drawn to the central aim of what the gospel is about and not have a foot in both worlds, but instead two feet firmly planted in the truth that God has drawn us to, and that is this church, right? The church of Jesus Christ is what he's called us to, both feet firmly planted within that. Let me simply say it this way. I think also the times in which we live in, there is an erosion of that kind of commitment to both feet planted firmly within this kingdom that God has called us to and his church. Listen, the church is his bride. Yeah, we are his people. He has called us his body. And Galatian church needed to hear that kind of strong language to say, you are called into that body and so live out your purpose within that body. I think it's a message that will be helpful for us as well in this time. And so finally, I think that our purpose then being clear to us, we will go out and share the good news message. And my prayer and hope is that many people will come to hear the good news in this new ministry year that we're experiencing. Many people will hear the good news and will respond by believing in Jesus Christ. You know, I think some people in our world right now are recognizing that the world is not working for them. They're recognizing the emptiness. They're recognizing the tension that they're experiencing in this world in which they're living with both feet in. And I believe that some people need to hear the truth. And when they hear it, they'll recognize the truth there in Jesus Christ. And they will yearn to receive that. And I believe that will happen in our time. But listen, I think that there's a lot of people in our world right now that are also not um, ready to hear this message. And not expecting to hear this message. And they don't look at what their life is like right now and think to themselves, everything's wrong, everything's going wrong, and I really need to find what is good. So I believe, though, listen, I believe that many people will be surprised by the good news in this new ministry year ahead. And we'll see through the delivery of the message of truth that the truth is there found in Jesus himself and not in the world. And through that discovery, they'll find out to themselves that actually this world is leading me somewhere that I don't want to go. And where I want to go is where Jesus leads and that's everlasting life, the full life, the Zoe life. I had a conversation with somebody recently who said that they, they were like that. They, they really weren't looking for Jesus. Uh, and they thought that they were really in a position in their life, a place in their life, where they thought they were in Eden, that they created a, a good Eden for themselves. But it was only when they had the opportunity through a Christian who was speaking with them, when they had that opportunity then to be able to discover who Jesus is, this person said, suddenly it was like this light went on to be able to see that where they were standing was not Eden. It wasn't. Wasn't looking for it, didn't realize, didn't think they needed something different, but it was in the discovery of discussion with other Christians that the light went on. And that person said, suddenly I knew that the truth was here with Jesus. 
And when I believed and received, that's when I discovered that Jesus had drawn me into the true Eden, the real Eden. And that's life with him in his kingdom. And that's life here in the church. Well, we're praying for more of those kinds of blossoms, more of those kinds of wonderful testimonies and truths to be experienced here in our church this year. I want us to pray together <clears throat> and then transition into communion. And so as we pray together at this time, I want to draw your attention to those two things again. The truth about Jesus Christ. That is why Galatians was written, and that's why it is for our time. And secondly, that purpose of the church. Called for a purpose to live the new life, to embody the gospel. Let's pray. To that end, Lord Jesus Christ, we come now to communion. We come now to your table, Lord. To that end, Lord God, we ask for your blessing, for your work, for your spirit to be active, to be working with Pacific. I pray that you would draw us to the foundation of the truth of the gospel, which is so beautifully represented by these emblems that we will take now. And Lord, I pray that you would draw us to a foundation in such a way that we might be a light to the world for those who are desperate to hear it and for those who don't even realize that they need to hear this good news. For those who will be surprised, we pray for them now. And Lord, I pray that Pacific Community Church would be a church who knows who we are, that we are your body, and we are this new life created through your death and resurrection. And I pray, Lord, that you would guide us and lead us and fill us with your spirit so that we might live this new life out. So at the beginning of this series, Lord, we ask that you would teach us and lead us. In Jesus' name, amen.